I, you know, I, I am, I have such mixed emotions about this bill, like both of them, right? I mean, the straw ballot, of course, fundamentally sounds better, right? Let the people decide what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Let's, you know, if we, if we put it out there like that, that sounds better to me. Um, I, you know what, I'm going to also put this out there. I don't, you know what? I'm tired of the state intervening. Let's get y'all get out of get out of our local business. Well, I think I think um, what nice. you. <laughs> yeah. and by the way, love the timing, BJ. Like, yeah, all right. All right. This is BJ Hall. I'm not sure what we're gonna call this right now, but this is just <laughs> three concerned citizens. Uh, having a conversation about things that are impacting St. Mary's County. Like I said, um, I guess I guess I'm hurting the cats today. But uh, let's 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 go around the horn and introduce ourselves, Brandon. Yeah, hi. Uh, so I'm Brandon Russell. I am um, probably, as BJ calls me, one of the most concerned citizens <laughs> in St. Mary's County. Um, I ran for um, county commissioner last year. Uh, for District 2, Leonardtown, Hollywood. And uh, prior to that, I served on the Democratic Central Committee. And I just am, am very into following local politics and what is going on in our area, how decisions in Annapolis affect us, what decisions the commissioners are making, uh, and making sure that people are informed and have uh, good information to make decisions with. Roger that. Wow, that's a lot. That is. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I sh I'm 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 now rethinking what I said for myself. I, <laughs> I should have had a couple of notes. <laughs> you want to maybe wanna your intro now, BJ? I mean, you can no, 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 no. See now, I see. Then, then I'm just I'm just one of those guys that's trying to top the guy before. Us. No, no, no. I'm just. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, maybe that's why I feel like I have such a weight on my shoulders. I just put it too much there myself, right? Yeah, <laughs> that happens. It does. So my turn. Yes, sir. All right, I'm Chris Hill. Um, I'm currently a realtor in St. Mary's County and, and a concerned citizen like Brandon. And um, and I'm also the incoming president for the Maryland Association of Realtors. So um, I, um, I'm also on our legislative committees. So I spend a lot of time locally with our Southern Maryland Association and then the state association doing bill reviews every, every Thursday, Friday to review them and present them on Monday so that we can be ready for them on Tuesday. So, um, so I'm trying to... It's so hard, honestly. First of all, there's so many, right? Yes, like sir. you guys, yes. I, I mean, it's it's only I don't know how people keep up with them all, but um, I try to read just the you know I read the housing ones mostly, and anything St. Mary's County related, I try to plug in there. But um, you know, and, and and as you know, I don't know. If I, I mentioned earlier, like I'm uh, this week's a busy week for me in 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 Annapolis actually because we have our, our bill review tomorrow, uh, um, and then. Uh, and then I'll be Tuesday is the Maryland Realtors Lobby Day in Annapolis, where many of the realtors sign up and we come out and we present our key bills that we support. And I have my first press conference. I said that. So that's kind of fun. Um, but um, I, I mean, I thought this would be fun, like just to sit here and kind of go over some of these bills. And hopefully maybe fun's not the right word. But, you know, I think, no, no, no. We're going to go with fun. <laughs> We're going to have fun. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> no, you know, um, and and hearing differing opinions, we t I said that you know to you guys before, you know how I feel and how you feel might be different, but at least we can communicate about them. And maybe I'll learn something along the way. Maybe you'll learn something from me. That's doubtful, but um, <laughs> but possibly. Yeah, I I think the funny part is I think I think that we found that what we can call this, we can call this the concerned citizens. I like it. Yeah, I like it. That's good. <laughs> And it, you know, we, and it is funny because like I've followed politics my whole life. I mean, I've kind of, um, I'll, you know, my uh, I will tell you, I was different uh, political affiliation in my whole family growing up. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was always I was the uh, um, Alex P. Keaton of the family. OK, I don't know if you guys that's a generational reference, but um, family ties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all school, but um, so, it, you know, t in today's world, that's changed so much you know what i mean like you don't want to you know put yourself out there but i think this is going to be really interesting we have some we have some really important bills this year though right. that affect Definitely. st mary's county residents and uh, you know i'm always on the ones for housing and anything having to do with that so um, Roger that. but um, so the 
you you talked about how many bills that we we actually have right now. Uh, the Senate has five hundred and forty six legislative bills, and six hundred and ninety nine overall bills, including uh, some some of the bonding initiatives. Um, mm-hmm. And on the House side, they have seven hundred and six uh, legislative bills and eight hundred and seventeen. Uh, when you include the the bond initiative, so it's uh, a that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, on a on a note, like this is our for our conversation. How did yeah, you know, like I, I always think of like the the delegates and senators, and like you, it takes a lot of work to read all these bills. I mean, it really does. I mean, that's mm-hmm. I, I, I I give them kudos, right? Like because if you're actually well, maybe I shouldn't because <laughs> maybe right, <laughs> because, like, maybe you know, but. I think, you know, it's a lot of, you know, if, if you're, especially if you're passionate about one of them or the others, you know, that's, I guess that's what you do. And you just get your people to your constituents behind you to support you. And, um, but man, there's so many out there. You know, you know what happens? They have one of those young staffers read through all of them yep. and they give them the cliff notes and be like, all right, here's the four bullets that you need to know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that, they, and then the, true. The, the ones that, that kind of go against, against, um, your your platform, they just pull those out and don't even let you see them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're texting your staff, or what am I voting here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, just just gonna run through well, just just to give people an idea of what we plan on doing. What we plan on doing is just is walking through some of the bills in Annapolis and discussing some of the the major. Um, major bills that, that could impact us here in St. Mary's County um, and in the state at large, if, if we actually get to that point, well, probably get to that point this year, uh, consider that we have a lot of marijuana bills that are going to impact the entire entire state. And we know we got, we have a couple of uh, marijuana facilities that people like to talk about. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, with, with all the smoke shops popping up, we, I know everyone is assuming that, that either a smoke shop is going to turn into a weed spot as well, or mm-hmm. a weed spot is going to pop up next to all the smoke shops. So uh, we, we, we definitely need to understand the legislation around it. Um, and we need to be aware so we can actually um, lobby for um, some type of, uh, of uh, response at the county level, positive or negative, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So one of the biggest topics here in. Oh, you froze, BJ. That's how big the topic and is. So big if, that it needs it's it frozen. It needed extra bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> so say it one more time. What's the big one, BJ? One of the biggest topics in St. Mary's County over the past few years has been the YMCA. So yep. I mentioned the YMCA, even though we're about to talk about a public public facilities funding bill. Um because the the, uh, the the public facilities money has been introduced uh, in two different ways. Uh, there's HB five seven four, where the the uh, there's. Hold up, let me let me let me t- let me talk about the total budget first. So what is it? F- Fifty four million dollars. Fifty six. Fifty six. There you go. Fifty six is forty one and fifteen. You're right. All yeah. right. So <clears throat> fifty six million dollars uh, to cover uh, funding bonding. That we need, we need for bonds that we would need uh, f- to fund uh, our public facilities here in St. Mary's County. Brian Crosby introduced a, a bill that that should cover the entire 56, and the St. Mary's County delegation introduced a bill that split those into two portions: one uh, that covered 41 million, and then one that covers the 15 million uh, that that has been set aside for the YMCA. Um, I have my own feelings about it, but uh, I I will throw this around the horn. <laughs> uh, Brandon, so, what, what? Uh, you go ahead, oh. Brandon. Yeah, so I um, you know, I actually don't necessarily disagree with the idea of um, you know, splitting the YMCA funding off separately to make it contingent on their fundraising ability. Um, That does seem like a fiscally responsible thing to do. Um, But I kind of feel that that has already been covered with the process that the Y has gone through with the county commissioners and the agreement and MOU that they have. Um, And so it's really, you know, 
like not needed at the state level. Um, so, right. you know, personally, I see that there are two delegates, the delegates Morgan, who are opposed to uh, publicly funding this project. And this is kind of their way to have a little bit of oversight on it. But um, on the backside of that, I also think that um, it's a very interesting move for them, given that the conversation around um, uh, local courtesy and, you know, giving your um, local uh, commissioners the ability to make decisions and to stand by them. So it kind of makes me kind of makes me think that, you know, they don't agree with the way the commissioners did uh, the process and they don't trust that the commissioners are going to hold the why accountable for fundraising their portion of this project. Um, so that's a little interesting tidbit that kind of sticks out to me with that, this whole, um, this whole splitting of the funding into two separate bills. It, it could be one of those, uh, what, what did, uh, I'm trying to think uh, of what he said. Uh, why it was Wisecoff that said uh, Pontius pilot. It was like they're trying to. It was like we're gonna we're gonna yeah. send it up to Annapolis. Like, uh -huh. well, it's it's a state issue now. It was like now we can't do anything at the county level. We have to wait until next year. And mm -hmm. it's just to me, it's it, it it's just is it this whole thing has been a trick bag because it's been one thing after another. It was like, oh, we're gonna do the YMCA. And then it was like, oh, but we got to do a feasibility study. Oh, do we want to put it in Lexington Park? Oh, we're in Lexington Park. It was like, mm -hmm. come on, y'all. It was like, it, it, just do it or don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I, would, I, I agree with you. I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, I actually agree with what you're saying. I mean, there's nothing, none of us said anything controversial here. I think it's like, you know, they're all like, um, I mean, I think the one thing I see is like, I'm sorry, I was a builder for a long time back in my other life. 20 plus million dollars can build you a Taj Mahal pretty nice place is what I'm thinking. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, even in today's world, $20 million, a lot of money. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, and I don't know the details of how much they're supposed to raise. I haven't, honestly, I haven't read the whole bill. So I just kind of right. read the summaries, you know? Um, but I mean, you know, it, I, I kind of agree. I think I see the value in separating the two because I think it is a, you know, it, it, there is some, public private things going on here that maybe it needs to be separated and given its own courtesy as a bill. Um, and I mean, and maybe, you know, I, I hate that, the you know what, you know what, let's get real. I hate <laughs> the manipulation of these bills, right? Like there's nothing worse. And in and, and, and both ways, like, I mean, all different directions, they manipulate these bills to work to their ad, ad, advantage, right? Yeah. Politically. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, come on, the bottom line is funded or not. Right. Let's be real. You know? Right. And and we've got stuff that, you know, I mean, that's the only thing I would say, you know, without putting my opinion, because the YMCA obviously is going to be a great facility. It's going to be a great opportunity for people. It's the right thing. We There's no question about that, in my opinion. That's a lot of money. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I want to I want a new, uh, uh, you know, Mercedes with all the bells and whistles in it. Right. But it ain't in my budget. <laughs> You know, right. <laughs> that's the only thing I think of, you know. So so one of the things I will I will take up for the commissioners here, because if you, when we look at um, the group that um, from the Eastern Shore that we're working with on the YMCA side, Robbie Gill, um, and they have recently uh, assisted a lot more in on uh, with other facilities. So mm -hmm. there was there was recently um, they talk about one county that had to give two million dollars. I can't remember which one it was, but what what they ended up doing, they gave two million dollars just to secure the project. So it wasn't they didn't give two million dollars. They right. got the two million dollars back. So right. it was it was it was so they I actually had three donors that ended up giving like ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, if y'all know there that there are. Don't, uh, that people that, that that are willing to donate that type of money, that have that type of money, and they, and care that much about YMCA's in areas that don't have YMCA's, then you should be bringing those, uh, uh, those those um, donators here. You know, so so mm -hmm. those donors, excuse me, those yeah. donors to to St. Mary's County. So I I understand where the commissioners are coming from because it's like, all right, don't make us pay fifteen when you didn't do that to the people that are over across the water. 
Yeah. yeah, I definitely see your point there, too. Um, but, you know, let's not forget that the YMCA does have a big stake in this. You know, they're going to send people here to do fundraising and they're sending a person here to, to live here and just do that. Um, and I think, uh, you know, kind of going back to Chris's point about the cost, um, all of this back and forth over this bond authority bill, you know, it could potentially delay the project further. Um, which is just going to drive the cost up, which we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, right. And and I mean, I think when they first started, you know, this this has been in the works for I don't know, people have been working on this like six or eight years now. Yeah. Um, and you know, the original number to build the entire thing was fourteen or fifteen million, I think, and now we're up to at least twenty two, um, and that is going to rise. I mean, it's going to go up further. So it's really about how how do we secure this funding and and do it in a way that is fiscally responsible, but also that gets the project done so that we're not on the hook for even more. Um, this, is probably, this is probably one of the most expensive projects in the county right now, then, if you if you look at it that way. What's well, what, well, one of One of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's this, this little short street that's costing us a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> now that's been on the books for 20 years. So there's another story there. So let's just hope, let's just hope the, uh, let's just hope the YMCA doesn't take that long. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just, just so you know, um, uh, a good portion of, of the expense, when you, when you talked about the Taj Mahal, the, a good portion of the expense is tied to the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, well, that Olympic size pool. Not, not to get into the weeds on this one, because I know we, 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 you know, is, is this, is this right next to the swimming pool? Like, is this where this is going to be? Or is this? There's been an argument about a pool next to a pool, but okay. if, you, mm-hmm. if you go over there to to the Great Mills pool, it's a puddle, and, a, it, <laughs> and it and it and it hasn't been taken care of well. I mean, trust me, that thing that thing has some issues. So I think much, didn't they just close it yesterday or something for a maintenance issue. I wouldn't I'm, know. I'm sure that they did. It, yeah. It's probably it's probably closed often because it's <laughs> it's just yeah. it's just a, it's it's it was a bad concept from the beginning. I just think there's a lot, you know what I mean? There's a lot to this and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not making an opinion one way or another. I think, I think them separating the money, honestly, I kind of agree with it. I mean, if I were to boil down to it, nuts and bolts, I say separating probably makes sense. I mean, that's, that's what I think. <laughs> I, I understand why it's done, but I just, I just think it's another trick in a line. Well, it's a, it's well, another way, unnecessary hurdle. I think they yeah. actually they had first reading on this in Annapolis um, already they, two days ago. They did. So, mm-hmm. so I haven't heard that yet. So I'm anxious. To, I'm gonna. I'm trying to. I don't know if we can find it somehow, but I want to hear what was said. See what. See how it went. But uh, speaking speaking of which, just uh, I uh, took the luxury of creating a banner that that tells everyone where they can find all this information. That's great. Uh, That's <laughs> because. Great. Because a lot of people uh, ask me all the time, like, where can I find these bills? I was like, one, you can just Google it like everybody else. But, right. <laughs> but if you go to the website below um, and, and, you, and you search legislation, uh, look for, for your delegate, your senators. I mean, they, they provide the information uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, and they, they actually allow you to sign up for um, a daily email uh, so you can get um, – you can get updates on the bill that you're tracking. So, I mean, they have a lot, a lot of cool tools on the, on the website. They try to make it as convenient as possible. I wish, I wish they didn't make it that convenient because I used to be able to download a spreadsheet that was so easy for me. So selfishly, I wish that it was all still <laughs> in, a, in a, in a spreadsheet so I could just monitor so every bill. I just clicked on it. So the Senate version had first reading on the third as well. And they have a hearing on the 21st at one o'clock. So um, that'll be interesting. I want to. I'll, I'll definitely want to listen in on that. Is that five seventy five? Uh, this is five seventy five. Oh no, no. This is uh, uh, four fifty eight. Uh, Senator Bailey's uh, cross file. Four five seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. Four, okay. four five eight. Uh, SB four five eight. And that's the. It looks like it's the same bill. It's cross file, right? So, okay. And that one um, they read on the third, and now there's a hearing. It says on the twenty first at one p.m. Okay. So everybody tune in if you're interested. Roger that. <laughs> so. All right. So transition. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got, I guess this is where we're going into the, the more, um, we thought that was a, a, a tough bill to talk about. Good Lord. We're in for, we're in for a treat today. I, I actually yes. don't think that one was, that one was tough. And I, I, I actually, I don't think that this one should be tough, even though people make it a lot tougher than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. It's to me, I, I'm a black. Um, and, and it's like, either it is, either you agree or you don't. And it's no reason for us to sit here and, and fight about it. It was like, especially when we talk about the people that are, are the most passionate. So it was like, <laughs> it was like I know I'm not going to convince you. This is how I feel. Deal with it or don't. So, right. <laughs> um, and of course we were talking about the, the, uh, the legislation formerly known as HB 655. Now, uh, HB Four four seven. I was telling the group it doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't. I, I mean, I, I was hoping that it had like a, a really cool number. I mean, four four seven just you know sounds <sighs> like an area code almost. <laughs> <laughs> so that that one is there, there's so the, the controversy though is really there's two two different bills here. You know sure. that, that you know there's five ninety seven and. House Bill 597 and, and House Bill 447. So delegate Can you explain Carl, what those bills? Can you explain what those can you explain what those bills are? Yeah, and, and, and just from what I can tell, I'm gonna start with um let's start with 447 then. All right. So mm-hmm. um the bill it, it's actually a change to local government, right? Is what it is for the election cycle. And it and it requires that um uh, uh, one county commissioner shall be a resident and of shall be elected by the voters of the first election district of the county to represent that district. Um, so basically, the changes is each district would have their own county commissioner, right? And voted on by their district. Yeah, that yeah. part. Right. <laughs> I got, I'm getting there. Sorry, slow. Um, you know, so um, and 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 however you want to look at that, and however you want it to be perceived. There's there's several counties that do things the same way we do, and there's several counties that do it this way. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. the, you know, it's it's hit or miss. And my understanding of 597 is um, that basically it would put that question on the ballot, right? So it would make the, com- the, the voters, uh, the people of St. Mary's County would have the opportunity to decide whether they want to have that or not, right? Mm-hmm. Not decide. Well, well, decide is is probably not the right word. Okay. You get to, it's it's kind of like we're just asking. It's like, how do you feel about this? Let me let me mm-hmm. take your temperature. And so, and, it's, <laughs> and even with them saying straw poll to me, it's like it was like, why did you have to say straw poll? This is like you're just asking for our opinion. It was like, why don't you just do a survey? It's like we don't have to do it. On, <laughs> we don't have to do it on the on the ballot. It's it's literally just a a straw poll during during the off off year. Well, not an off year, but uh, the presidential, right? Um, that they're trying so, to do. So, and it, it does actually. The funny thing about that is, you, in your in to to agree with you, it says clearly the vote on this question is advisory only. So right. I get it. Like if you're, I mean, personally, I agree. If you're going to vote on something, make it the make it the law of the land or not, right? Like right. if mm-hmm. if you're going to do it, go for it. And that's what I kind of instead like the the theme for us tonight. Like, if you're gonna do it, do it. If you're not gonna do it, don't do it. Okay. Like, I, I get that. Um, I, you know, I, I am, I have such mixed emotions about this bill. Like both of them, right? I mean, the straw ballot, of course, fundamentally sounds better, right? Let the people decide what they want to do, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Let's, you know, if we if we put it out there like that, that sounds better to me. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to also put this out there. I don't, you know what? I'm tired of the state intervening. Let's get y- y'all get out of get out of our local business. Well, I think I think um, what nice. you. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, love the timing, DJ. Like, yeah, I'm that, all right. Well, Brandon, Brandon, can you tell him why? Why explain why it's necessary for us to go to the uh, to the state to get this change? Yeah. So. Uh, we uh, at the county level, the commissioners don't have the ability to make legislation that affects the county. Um, and so anything that we change in local law has to be run th- uh, through Annapolis and approved or denied. Um, and I think the discussion around this particular idea 
you know, there's so many things at play here. Um, I think last time, you know, when this was 655, that, you know, there was some messaging issues around it. A lot of people got caught up in saying that they were being called racist because they uh, uh, supported at-large voting. Um, And I, you know, like Chris, I don't necessarily disagree that, um, you know, the voters should have the ability to decide whether or not um, this change is made to how we vote. But the caveat that I have with that is, you know, are we going to have one side or the other um, giving truthful information for people to make informed decisions? Or are we going to be using biased arguments like if this happens, we're taking away three of your votes, Um, which that's not necessarily the case. You know, my response to that could be, (laughs) well, right now you have people who live in Um, 7th District voting for the representation of Lexington Park and vice versa. And if you don't frequent one area or the other, is it really right for you to vote on who represents that area? Um, And I also, like Chris pointed out, you know, this, um, what is it, the HB 597, it's not a referendum. It is a straw poll. So if it, if, Folks are out there billing this as a referendum. That is a lie. Um, It is a straw poll. It doesn't hold the commissioners responsible or anybody responsible for enacting the results. Um, And really, you know, my personal opinion is that this is a way to play the long game. So, you know, we get we elect our representation in the midterm election. So our next one won't be until 2026. So if this goes on the ballot in 24 during the presidential election, we're going to have to get through another year or two of legislation in Annapolis in the hopes that it will affect the 2026 election, but it will likely not. So, you know, if you're looking at this from a partisan standpoint, this is the Republican long game. You know, we want to stay as a Republican majority on the county commissioner board through 2030 because that will be the next election after 2026. Um, Again, like I said, I don't necessarily disagree with it going to the voters, but we need to make sure voters have the accurate information about what's really happening. You know, this reminds me of several years ago, there were, and 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 it escapes me, but there was a, there was a vote on the type of county government we were have, right? Like Mm -hmm. um, what code code, home, Mm -hmm. code home rule, right. And um, by the way, I was sitting here trying to Google it the whole time we've been talking. I'm like, I'm like, I gotta find this thing, but I'm trying to figure out what it was. But um, and I remember overwhelmingly the, the St. Mary's County opposed it at the time, if I remember correctly, right? But but it was it was for a specific reason that 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 a lot of people are not don't don't, don't mention when we start recalling mm-hmm. that vote. It mm-hmm. was it it was. The the reasons why we've denied it have, has always been connected to the power associated with the presidency. My understanding was, I, I think that was, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, it's two different votes, and I'm, I may, I may be getting confused on which one, but it was, <clears throat> the legislation was was adjusted. Um, goodness, man, I wish I had my notes now, <laughs> but uh, Josh and I actually had this conversation a a a, couple, a few weeks ago where we were. Uh, Josh guy, uh, but we, it there was there was a an issue with the power that the the president had. Some people felt a certain way about about that. And man, what was it? Maybe it was, they were making it full time, and and mm-hmm. they they gave him more time uh, more power. I, I I had to go back and get that uh that article and send it to you all. But I had I actually have several articles that that discuss some of the uh, some of the issues that that were brought up. Uh, from from uh, back then, as, as Brandon, you know, it's funny. We Brandon talked about uh, early on. We talked about having the facts to this kind of stuff, right? Like the question then I, I would have is, does it it does it truly affect the residents of St. Mary's County and those in the districts that are less represented, whatever that may be, right? Does this really is is I'd like to look at the stats, like if each district, how much each district voted and whether it affected someone mm-hmm. differently. Well, see, the problem that you have with that is a lot of people have been disenfranchised by the way that um, that everything is set up. And so you can look at the numbers, but 
<clears throat> like say for instance, the place the place where where there's most likely to be a change is in District Four, right? right? And so, but if you look at District Four, um, the Democratic the Democratic candidate hasn't won hasn't won that one since for 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 several cycles, yeah. and and mm-hmm. and Ty ran on the polls twice, so mm-hmm. um, it, the arguments don't necessarily support. Um, support that if you look at the results. All but, right, wait a minute, hold on. This is where we're going to the heat. Hold up, hold up. But see, but this is, but I, but I, but but the thing that you have to look at though is, especially after uh, everything went fully Republican. Hold up, can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, after everything, sure. so after everything went fully Republican, look at the Democratic turnout. Mm-hmm. And so there, the under, I think a lot of people understand that the Republican primary is where the decisions are made and it doesn't matter and mm-hmm. once you make it to the general. And so you can sit there and 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 say that no one that um that the that that no one has won district four, but how many of those people didn't come out because they understood the math? Right. Well that I mean that's a real question, but I mean is it worth changing the whole process for that? You know what I mean? Like it sounds like to me that the the it sounds like the Look, I, I, the numbers don't seem to support it, right? You know I mean to be real, right? But that, but that's 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 a partisan argument. My okay. thing, my because my my thing is I'm I'm actually a Republican, right. and and I don't understand a system where someone that's out of my district should be choosing my representation. Well, yeah, right. I, I, like Mary's County. That's the thing, right? You know I, what I mean? Like your district is the well, county, well, and you're. My, you know, and 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 I I'm with you, but the problem that I have when you, when you start having that conversation is make them all at, all at large. Then what? That's what's possible the- too. I mean, you know, way I you know, it's interesting. I think about this for you know, um, as like watching the elected officials and and you know, you you have a constituency that you you know, somebody comes to me. If I go to my county commissioner, I say, hey man, we got a problem over here in Valley Lee, right? And you need you need to fix it. And he you know it, and he goes to the other commissioners and they may say no 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 as a, because he's if his mindset is only his district right that's mm-hmm. really what we're petitioning for in these bill and this bill is that he's focused on his district or her district sorry or their district and uh and and i think that i would rather if you they have to actually then go and convince the other ones to do that as opposed to the other ones I can go to any county commissioner and say, hey, man, you got a problem in Valley Lee. You need to fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. And if they're only focusing on their district, are they going to are they going to judge that differently? You know what I mean? Are they going to deal with it differently? I don't know. Well, you know, that point has been raised um, by the commissioners about how it will um, it will make the commissioner board less cooperative in serving yeah. the whole of St. Mary's County because they will be too focused on their district. Um, personally, I think that that argument is not really a strong one because, you know, when you get elected at a local level, even if you are elected by your own district, you know, you're working for the good of everyone because on a local level, you know, you can't do one thing in Leonardtown or Lexington Park that's not going to affect you know, somewhere nearby that's that's outside of the district. Um, And I think there's a couple of points here, too, that, um, you know, should be raised as part of this conversation. And that is, you know, I've heard stories of, um, you know, certain commissioners neglecting their district and other commissioners from another district going in and, you know, trying to serve that population. Um, And if that is if that is something that's happening, you know, it then becomes very difficult for the district whose commissioner is not representing them well or not serving them well to hold that person accountable because so many other people in the county are voting for that position. Um, And one other one other thing I wanted to throw out, too, was, you know, uh, uh, when this bill was uh, 655 a couple years ago, it also affected Charles County. Um, But Charles County has now decided to take action of their own accord um, and the commissioner who pushed that was B.J. Bowling, who is from, I can't remember what district he's from, but it's the southern part of Charles County, which I believe um, leans Republican. And so he did this at the, 
potential expense of his own seat on the board if people only vote according to party lines, which does happen, you know, pretty often. Well, Charles um, County doesn't lean Republican in any district. <laughs> well, I think it does in the southern portion. In the they southern part, more, more so than other districts, probably. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. And so I think that, um, you know, I think that there's a strong argument to be made that, um, you know, not only is this the right thing to do, but it, it, at least in Commissioner Bowling's example in Charles County, um, you know, he could have potentially you know, given up his seat if enough people get together in his district to support a different party candidate. Um, and so part of my questioning of why is it that the commissioners don't support this idea is not just tied to, well, the voters should decide, but is it really tied to, you know, the commissioner from a certain district being afraid of losing their seat? Um, and is it personal? I mean, it's very difficult when you're in a role like that to not make it, you know, separate the personal out of it. I mean, we, when we run for office, that is a personal decision. We put ourselves into that. So I can see how all of these things are at play. I, um, I think just, you just BJ mentioned... Bowling is in district one in Charles County, which kind of is smack dab in the middle of the County, to be honest with you. So, you know, it's not like fifth district with Newburgh and that area. And, and it, but it does, it does have poor tobacco in it and La Plata. So I can see that, you know, one one thing that I, I wanted to bring up before we close this thing out, um, one reason why I think that that we should consider um, it's hard to run for county commissioner in the entire county. Yes. <laughs> and and now what you what you've done is 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 like you've raised the price. Uh, you the, the the cost to actually run is a lot higher when you actually have to consider all four districts. Well, and I, I, and at this level, at this level, you, you, I mean, we're talking about a part-time commissioner gig and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be only for people who can afford it. It should be right. for any, any citizen that that's concerned enough to run for it. I mean, I think, I think this, you know, I mean, at some point, I think I would support the straw ballot if it said, this is what we're going to do, what the people say they're going to do. Right. What we, I think it, it, I would support that more if it said, whatever the overall county says, because I mean, that, that means everybody's going to, you know, you know, Mechanicsville is going to support. They're going to say, yeah, I want that. I want, you know, if they want in district voting, they want their representative to represent them in that specific district. And I think if they could change this, if that bill would have some, I, I think in our, uh, in the real estate world, we do um, uh, support with amendments, right? Like, mm -hmm. but, you know, if it, if it basically said, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put it on the ballot and that's what we're going to do after we get vote on it. And that might be, I might, it might give it some substance, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think it, I, I think it would add, it, w it would add some substance to it. Um, but even in that case, I think the, the biggest part of um, the, you know, referendum straw ballot idea passing is it basically would give us um I don't know, a year and a half or so to ed really educate the public about what this means. And right. I think part of the reason that Code Home was so confusing for people is because they just didn't know what it meant. No, you're right. Um, and so that's a huge piece of it as well as, you know, not only just getting the right information out there, but actually getting it to people so that they understand it in a way that they can understand it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think we, we probably need to have a discussion about Code Home because I mean the fact that we have to go to Annapolis to make to change any of our laws is ridiculous. I agree. And yeah. especially when you, when you think about how little the people in Annapolis actually consider St. Mary's County. Yeah, so yeah, that one that I was true. I, I agree with that. So we're we gonna wrap it up there. Yeah. Er, it's a good place for us to wrap it up. I think so. All right. I I appreciate you gentlemen and um hopefully we can do this again pretty soon. I'm in. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. And it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Was it good to you? Okay. <laughs>